It's meal prep day over here. If you're new, I'm Amy. I'm a wife and a mom to two young girls and I love sharing what I'm cooking over here in my kitchen. Today I'm really excited just to do some simple meal prep that will really help me throughout the week. I'm going to be making a really delicious breakfast casserole, one that I've never made before and I've never actually seen it made before. I'm also going to be doing some snicker stuffed dates. I love this recipe. It's such a good sweet and filling snack and also some veggie wraps. This is a really nice take on kind of like those pinwheel tortillas that you might have had at parties before, but it's full of veggies and just full of flavor. I'm ready over here. I have my recipe, everything that I want to prep. We'll see how much I actually get done. The ingredients for the first recipe. Let's go ahead and get started. I have made these veggie pinwheels before, and I really do think that you do need to make it the day you're actually eating it. Otherwise it gets a little bit soggy because of that kind of dressing. So I would definitely recommend you could prep everything ahead of time, but just make sure to actually assemble everything when you're going to actually eat it. But we love this recipe. I'm going to get started on kind of like the dressing. So the first thing I'm adding is some yogurt. The recipe calls for not like plain Greek yogurt. I'm just using whole milk, regular yogurt. And then I'm adding whipped cream cheese. You could use regular cream cheese, reduced fat cream cheese, anything you'd like. And some ranch seasoning. I'm using the ranch seasoning from Trader Joe's. You could just use like a dip mix. I'm sure you could even just use ranch dressing. And I'm just gonna give it a really good mix. Cream cheese isn't quite like room temperature, so I'll have to kind of squish that a little bit. But this is just gonna be kind of like the dressing or the sauce for these veggie wraps. It's still a bit lumpy, but that's, again, just because the cream cheese isn't quite room temperature. I'm just going to go ahead and set this aside, chop up the veggies, get everything else ready, come back, give it a little mix. Now I'm going to go ahead and chop up the veggies. I'm going to do peppers first. Okay, we have some sliced peppers and some diced. I'm just going to go ahead and set these aside, and I'm going to get started on the green onion. I'm just going to use kitchen scissors to cut up the green onion. The green onion were pretty thick, so I'm actually going to go through with my scissors and make the pieces a bit smaller. I have pre-cut up broccoli, but I actually want the pieces to be a lot smaller, so I'm going to go ahead and cut them up. Everything is now ready for lunch for the next few days. So I have the sliced peppers. Those are for my husband and my kids and for me, if for sides, for snacks, anything like that. Here's all the veggies for the wraps. I have extra green onion. That's going to be for breakfast prep some cheddar cheese. I actually froze this. We got a big block from like a cheese shop, but you could skip the cheese, use whatever kind of cheese you'd like. Tortillas. These aren't quite burrito size. They're a bit smaller, but you could use like burrito tortillas if you'd like. This dressing or kind of the sauce that's going to go on the wrap. It's still kind of slightly lumpy, but that's totally okay. It'll be really delicious. I'm gonna save the green onion bottoms and I'm gonna go ahead and put some water in this cup. And now these green onions should grow a couple more times and I'll just change the water every day or two. This casserole I'm just so excited about. I was not gonna do this originally, but we have bread left over from last week. I was originally gonna do a different recipe for breakfast, but I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I think this will be a really quick and easy recipe to put together. Originally I was using these rolls, but I actually ended up using sourdough bread instead and make kind of like an egg casserole with cheese, the green onion I just chopped up and some eggs. Okay, so I just went ahead and cubed up the bread. I've never used bread in an egg casserole before, but I think bread, toast and eggs go really well together. So I will definitely let you know how this goes. But I'm also going to go ahead and cut up the cheese. This is the unexpected cheddar from Trader Joe's. I don't know if you've ever tried it before, but it's a, kind of like a mix between Parmesan and sharp cheddar. So it's a fairly flavorful cheese. And I'm also going to use Velveeta slices. This cheese just kind of crumbles apart. So I'm just going to use my hands and I'm going to oops, crumble it. I just shot some pieces at myself. Um, you could definitely add any kind of veggies to this casserole that you'd like. And let's cube up the Velveeta. And crack up the eggs and mix them up really well in this bowl.
And now you can season it with whatever you'd like. I'm gonna use some salt, some of this cheesy seasoning from Trader Joe's. This is really tasty. It has like garlic and dried cheddar cheese, onion powder, rosemary, oregano. So I think it's a really good complement to eggs, but you definitely can just skip it. And then some pepper. And I'm just gonna give the eggs a really good mix. I used nine eggs in here. I don't have any spray oil, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of butter and just rub it all along the dish. And then I just use my fingers to kind of make sure all the surfaces have some butter. Just turned on my oven, it's preheating to 375. I'm guessing it's gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna start it at 30. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble everything in the casserole dish now. So I'm gonna put all the bread on the bottom. I'm gonna add the Velveeta slices that I cut up next, as well as some of this unexpected cheddar. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the eggs in there. I want all of that bread to be coated in egg if it can be. I'm just gonna try and get all of the bread wet. You could probably use like, this is a pretty shallow big pan. You could probably use one that's a little bit smaller and the casserole would be a bit thicker, but I wanna just get more servings out of it and have bigger pieces. So I'm just gonna do it like this. And now let's put the green onion on top. This looks really good. I'm excited to see what I think of it, but it's ready to go in the oven. I've seen a variety of takes on these Snicker stuffed dates and I love it. We're doing it peanut free over here, but you could definitely use like peanut butter or peanuts on top. But I'm gonna show you now what we're gonna do over here. Here are all the ingredients for the Snickers dates. Definitely use peanut butter. I think that would be delicious and you could use peanuts on top. I found this almond butter. It's kind of hard to find almond butter that's not made in a peanut facility. So I got this, some dates, chocolate chips. I would use the Lily's chocolate chips, but those are made in a peanut facility, so I can't use those. Also, I was painting yesterday. That's why I have paint on my hands. Sunflower seeds, you could definitely use peanuts. I think that would be super tasty. So let's go ahead and put this all together. Okay, so I have eight dates, and I am going to see... I'm just going to slice them open. They're a little bit cut already, probably from pitting them, but I don't want to cut all the way through. I'm just going to kind of open them up. But I noticed that I'm actually not going to use the sunflower seeds because they were packaged in a peanut facility. So, but those would be super tasty. I might add them directly to mine when I'm eating it. Yeah, some of these are already open, so that makes it easier. And I heated this in the microwave for about 30 seconds. I just wanted it to be a little bit softer since we store it in the fridge. And I'm just gonna take a, in a, a big amount of it and put it in the middle of the date. I mean, this is just a very easy recipe. I've made it once before because I've never tried like stuffed dates before, but I've heard they're really filling. Now I'm gonna melt these chocolate chips just until they're melted. I don't wanna overcook them. I'm just gonna put it in the microwave. This looks like it should be good. So I put the dates really close together and I'm just gonna drizzle the chocolate on top. It's a little bit thick. I think if you put like coconut oil or something in the chocolate, it would drizzle a little bit easier. I might just put like dollops on each one. I feel like that would be really good probably not gonna look that pretty, but that way each one gets a good amount of chocolate. Just gonna transfer the dates to this Pyrex dish and I'm gonna refrigerate them. I have made these ones before, like I said, and I think they're really, really good in the fridge. The texture is much more caramely because the dates just get caramely texture and it tastes really really good i think it tastes much more similar to a candy bar this is not going to taste quite as much like a snickers bar as it would if you were using like peanuts and peanut butter but these are really really delicious here it is i just took it out of the oven you can still hear it sizzling it took just 30 minutes and it looks so good here's everything i'm so excited to eat this 
for the next few days. I love these Snickers dates. The veggies are nice and ready to go. I can just throw them in the wrap with the sauce right here. I have those extra veggies that I cut up of the cheese and this breakfast casserole. I am so excited to try it. I will definitely let you know how everything is. just wanted to come back and let you know I love this it's so tasty you get that little bit of crunch but also some softness from the bread the flavor is great it's nice and cheesy the green onion give it kind of a nice pop of onion flavor so so good I would definitely make this and it was just so simple and easy here are the dates the day after I made them so the chocolate has completely cooled so good and the next day I'm also showing you the veggie wraps that I'm making, I will say these are not burrito sized tortillas and the burrito sized tortillas do look nicer and stay together a bit better, but I think this size tortilla, just kind of a larger regular tortilla works really well if you're just eating it, you know, at, for lunch with your family, anything like that. But we love this. It's delicious. It's really family friendly and it's just an easy recipe and you can use any ingredients that you'd like. Thanks for watching and for hanging out with me in the kitchen. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the other videos I've created. I love meal prepping, doing grocery hauls, different easy recipes, family friendly recipes. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. I'll see you next time.